Welcome to the Hoop Dreams Podcast 2022 NBA Playoff Preview. I'm Will Gates, and that's my dog, Arthur A.G. A.G., man, listen, we picking this thing up in the second round. I know the first round meant a lot to a Damn lot of people Damn, the first round. Out there. I mean, hey, <laughs> what was supposed to happen eventually did happen. So, uh, so we going, we going. But I do want to just talk a little bit, man. We just got to mention it in the first round. This Utah and Brooklyn. Two teams who probably had the mechanics yeah. to do some yeah. damage, man. But it was clear something was going on. But what was your take, man, on the fact that the Brooklyn Nets lost and the Utah Jazz, man, they lost? What was your take on that? Uh, Brooklyn, I mean, you know, just everything that happened with them, you know, it was going to – I don't know how they thought that they was going to – overcome that you know what i'm saying um you know they they got some soul searching to do over there in brooklyn on what they're gonna do with their team uh you know i mean you got i mean i don't know if it's egos or or you know am, am i bigger than you is my team and all of this stuff man but that there's the the two and it comes from top down you know what i'm saying right Right. The GMs, the head coach, and then to the players. And they all have to buy in and say, I'm going to sacrifice this for the team. I'm going to sacrifice. And it, and it was none of that. But I, I just got to ask you this, though, particularly with the, the Brooklyn situation with Kyrie. A lot of heat has been thrown his way because he uh, didn't take the vaccine. You know, they felt like that he let down his team. He let down the community. Uh, what's, your, yeah. what's your take on that? I, shit, he did. I mean, you you signed the play. I mean, I understand your religious things, and and and, but hey, man, it, it comes to a point that to where you're gonna have to, you know, make a decision: is it for you and the team, or is it for you outside of the team, making sure you're healthy and wealthy or whatever? I mean, I don't, you know, that that just, I would have took the vaccine even if I was against it, just so I can be there with my teammates. I didn't want to miss no game. If you love basketball that much. Shit, come on, man. Interesting take on that. I mean, I mean, I, it's hard for me to judge his personal um, process of that because at the time, nobody knew what the vaccine could do to you, couldn't do to you. So, um, but do you think he deserves all of the, the heat for their losing? I mean, they did go through a stretch where they still had KD and James Harden, and that thing just didn't work out like they anticipated, and I think that has to bear some burden as well, though. Oh, it's not it's not all on Kyrie fault. I mean, it's the it's the uh, the the I mean, like I said, it's the whole team. It's the owners, the the GM, the head coach. I mean, Steve Nash didn't make adjustments correctly when he when he was in when they was playing. You know what I'm saying? So he, they all are bare fault of that. Even the guys that was hurt, you know, he out. The 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 shooter guy, Joe. You know, he I ain't see him none this year. Like when what the hell was wrong with him? What what you heard? Something broke? Like I mean, I mean and then and then the um they role players, they bench players. See, usually when you got two stars like that, and and maybe one of them is struggling or can't man, they tried, man, it made it seem like um KD was like a damn rookie. Like he was like, oh my God, they all up in him. The Celtics are just making him like he don't, he's missing baskets and this and that. I don't know what was going on with that, but he's still a superstar in my book. Some dudes just have bad games, you know, uh, uh, you know, you, that, that just goes with the territory of the game. But I mean, I, I was raised up on team. If you ain't, you, you, you if you ain't, you ain't all in with the team. It, it's something that's going to come back to bite you and hunt you to but, where you can't move forward. Is that really the forward. NBA mantra, though? Is that the NBA doesn't really necessarily rest on team. It rests on individualism. I mean, when you look at it, you could pick any team and pick the superstar. You look at the Bulls. You knew it was Michael Jordan, even though they had Scotty and Horace and then Dennis and these other guys. But you knew who the star was. You go to the Utah Jazz, you know right now that Donovan Mitchell is the star. So when we talk about team, is that that really a fair assessment to say that that's why Brooklyn failed? Because they spent money to get superstars. 
not build a yeah. team necessarily. Let me tell you something, man. When Michael Jordan and Phil Jackson told him, hey, man, all that 50, 60 shit, and how we running this offense, you're going to have to trust Steve Curtin. You're going to have to trust B.J. Armstrong. You're going to have to trust these guys. This part of your team. You're going to have to throw – if you get the Detroit Pistons, you go in the lane and you see us three motherfuckers waiting on you, you got to throw the ball out to one of these guys that's open and trust that they will make that shot, man. So I always put team before individual when you're trying to capture a goal. And then the defensive. Everybody got to have pride on defense. You know, Celtics play as a team sometimes. And I think Golden State is the most put-together team, no matter who they reserves are. It's those, it's those three guys, man. Draymond, Clay, and Steph. And you could throw Iguodala in there, too. But though that foundation that they have set there in Golden State, you think about it, Will. Everybody was trying to play like them like three, four years ago. Oh, I did. They changed the scope of the NBA, especially with the three-point shot. But still, yeah. at the end of the day, is that really team play or is that just really the structure of that organization where they're saying, listen, our guy is Steph, then it's Clay, then it's Draymond, then it's Jordan Poole. Is that just... I just think that that's how their their hierarchy function as a team. But they know the superstar over there is Steph Curry. And Steph Curry is going to get his shots. So, look, normally back in the day, if your point forward, Draymond Green running the thing and get out and he get ejected, you, you normally say, oh, shit, they finna lose the game. Didn't happen. Jordan Poole just unconscious out there clay didn't have a good game but he's made for them type of moments 36 seconds left he hit a big three you see what i'm saying well let me ask you this and then we can move on i guess my question for you is does it make him a team just because they've made a decision to say this is our man this is the number two man this is the number three man even though every other team in the league is functioning like that they just haven't been as successful as the golden state warriors but it is clear the leader on that team, they'll say it's Draymond, but if you take Steph off that team, they're not going to have an opportunity to win an NBA championship. But they can win one without yeah. Draymond. It's clear that they can win one even without Clay. But they cannot win mm. an NBA championship without Steph Curry. It is just impossible because of the, 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 the style of play has really been dictated around him. Yeah. So, so I guess my question is, again, is it still more that this is just how they play as a team, even though every other team is playing like that and they just haven't been that successful? Yeah, every other team ain't got them, ain't got their role players. And, and every other team don't have they, the, the, you know, them guys went to five, what, five finals, four finals? Four in a row. That's, that's experience, man. The other teams just ain't got. Sorry, you ain't been here up under these lights. You know what I'm saying? We know how to operate. Oh, we down six with four minutes left. Watch what the, watch what how our team operate on this. Watch how we go down and get a stop and come back and capitalize. Watch how we make y'all turn the ball over. Now it's a six point swing. Now we up one. I feel you on that. I yeah. feel you on that, man. Well, listen, you talking about some great basketball, and I know we're gonna be backtracking a little bit because um, the the the. Conference semifinals is kicking off. It kicked off over this past weekend with game ones in the East where Giannis is just a man. A, I mean, this dude is a man among men. I mean, that's I know people say it differently, but that's truthfully what it is. And the Bucks pulled out a triple. I mean, he had a triple double, AG. 12-point win over Giannis, Boston Celtics. Giannis is the best player in the league. I don't know what the hell they talking about on ESPN and first take and all that bullshit. Giannis is the, again, <laughs> league, he can, you can give him a league MVP if you want to. I mean, the dude is, I mean, he's so humble with it, but he's a, he's a beast too. Like I'll rip your heart out, dude. Yeah. Yeah. And hand it to you. I think it's it's That's clearly, some scary clearly shit. favorites for the MVP. I mean, it's it's clear. You got you got Embiid, you got Jokic, you got Giannis. Anywhere you go, you do not go wrong yeah. 
with, with any yeah, of you can't choices. go wrong. So, but but yeah, I, yesterday's game thought, showed me something hey, I, I different gotta, about about Milwaukee, especially uh, with their second best player being out. Man, I I thought that Boston was going to run through them, but this just goes to show you that championship experience it is matters. A you it's can't. valuable, and there was nothing that they could do that that Boston could overcome what Milwaukee kept Dude. hitting them with. And it's so crazy. Uh, they call them the two J's. How both of y'all going to uh, have a bad game on the same day? You know what I'm saying? So was it Milwaukee's defense? Was it their championship DNA? But, I mean, damn. I mean, both of y'all have a bad bad game on the same day, and them boys was coming. I mean, I'm talking about them boys was coming. And I got to make a point about this, too, about the Chicago Bulls. I thought they would give a little bit more fight in a damn closeout game. I, I thought I wanted somebody to start a fight, like just show, show, show some madness. You know what I'm saying? I think, I think Chicago rolled over simply because of this, and I think that this is where Boston is struggling at with the Bucks too, man. The Bucks have so much size, so much great shooting. Yeah, I, didn't, I, didn't, I, I forgot that. Yeah, and defensively, that. man, they guard the mess out of you. And it's hard when your seven-foot power forward can get it off the rim and go to the other end and dunk it. And then if you beat him on the offensive end, they got the big fella sitting back there blocking and defending everything. Boston just wasn't big enough yesterday. So it's going to be interesting to see the, the, the you know, how they're going to come differently because they got, they got to make some changes because right now they're just too small for Milwaukee. Yeah, they too. I mean, if they not, if they not trying to do this up and down run, I'm talking about get them dudes tied, get them out of place to where they got to make stupid, silly fouls. But one thing that I know for sure, and two things for certain, is that damn Bobby Portis is the, I'm talking about, Giannis loves him. Unsung hero. Unsung hero. Because guess what? He's, he's going to give you everything else that you need. What? If you need and the energy. energy. And the energy and the heart. Defensively, he got it. He, he got bounds, it. He got it. He Post got it. Game, he can do it. He can shoot the long shot. I mean, it's interesting. I even think about the Bulls, what they gave up. Because oh he was actually God. playing like this with the Bulls. It wasn't like he wasn't giving the Bulls right. the same kind of energy, same level of tenacity. He was doing it. Yep. For whatever the reason, man, Chicago let that boy go. And he found a home in Milwaukee. Okay, and, man. And, and, man, he is – I know we're going to get to our picks later, but right now – um, the Bucks are showing that that championship mantra still sits on them. But yep. moving along, man, another game last night or over this weekend, man, that Warriors Grizzly game. Oh mm. my goodness, man! You talking about mm. two teams that I don't even want to say that they're evenly matched because they play so different, but yet their styles yeah. because they're different. It balanced each other out. So neither team yeah. could really pull away from each other. But yep. I'm loving this matchup with Steph and Ja. Man, mm. the old head going against the young head right now, man. What's your thoughts on that series, though? Man, I love it, man. I actually want that damn series to go seven games. Uh, your boys and them that came in and stole home court advantage. Uh Steph is like, you know, looking at Ja. Ja like looking at Steph like, fucker, bring it. Come on, because I'm here. But I think for Memphis, they haven't been there. They need to understand how they lost that game because they supposed to won that game. Absolutely. They, they, they know they got, they know they let one get away. And two, Bane didn't even show up. No, he didn't. Well, after, Bang, he, got, and, after he got dunked on. <laughs> I mean, you know, GP Junior put it. You gonna say he, so? You said so. You saying the dunk, the dunk man, after he got dunked man, on, all his man. shooting and everything just went out, went out man, his body. Tell you man, when Gary Payton the third, you got a six three, <laughs> you six 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 seven, and a six left three hand. guy eleven could rise above you, and you oh. jump. That that could take yeah. away some of your. That could take away some of your. <laughs> you know what you thought. 
G, I, hey, if that would have been me, I would have, if I was Bane, I would have been wanting to get this motherfucker back so bad. Like, if I couldn't get to the rim and dunk it, motherfucker, I'm, I'm finna get open. So, hey, throw me the ball over here so I can shoot it in it. I want him to come over here and, and, and guard me so I can shoot it in this motherfucker out and get me some type of something back. Like, because you just embarrassing me on national TV. But see, I think that's the thing with, with, with the Golden State Warriors. They they come across as if this they're this soft and friendly team, but them do some dogs over there, man. Ain't Steph, shit about them Steph, soft. Well, I'm just saying they smile all the time at you. Steph hit a three, run down the court, shimmying and shaking <laughs> and laughing, but he's killing you. Like man, the second half, man, I think Steph had right. really he had a subpar game in the first half, but the yep. second half that dude's like, uh, young fella, let me show you how we really do it. Hey, and it's so crazy you just said that because the announcers, the the announcers was uh, said that they was like, "Oh, Steph Curry didn't play well in the first half. Oh, he's gonna play, he's gonna play better in the second half." And he it's like he heard him, like, "Oh yeah, let me come back out here and do this," and went to another level that they just couldn't get to, man. And that's what made Golden State so deadly, because the truth is, Golden State can be down twenty seven points. You yeah. know what that means to Steph? I just need to hit nine threes. Yep. <laughs> and he's capable of hitting Gee. nine threes a quarter. I mean, that, the way the man, the, I ain't never seen nobody get his shot off, off of two dribbles, a, 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 a herky jerky fake to get you, to get you bagging up a side to side. And the next dribble is him stepping away from you already into his motion. I'm talking about, did you see the four-point play he hit in the corner? Man, come on. Come on. And you know what I love, though? He don't do like you see a lot of other players. When they jump at his shot, Steph shoots the same shot. Sh ain't he changing like, shit. Ain't changing nothing. He's like, if you block it, you block it. But this is what I'm shooting. You know, I, I love that kind of game. He's like, listen, hey, I only know one way how to make it. And I ain't changing yep. that just because you jumping at it. You so, jumping at it. So, man, and then we talked about two games earlier, man, and I want to ask you this. So this 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 Boston Milwaukee, who you got, and how many games is this thing gonna take? I think Milwaukee. Uh, I'm gonna give ball. I'm, I'm just because I like their coach. You know they they you know he's he's from that pop tree. You know he's gonna go in and they're gonna have practice. They're gonna watch the film and everything. They're gonna come back. But I just think Milwaukee, like you said, they just too big, man. Porters, Lopez, Giannis. I mean, Middleton wasn't even playing shit. Uh, that boy Drew Holiday is a – man, I just love his you game. Show I, that Chicago boy some love because he getting big minutes in the center, in the series. Javon Carter. Yeah. Yeah, Javon Carter. Yep. I told him. I said, I said somebody said something about him uh, the other day on Facebook. I said, man, all that dude got to do is hit the open jump shot, don't turn the ball over, and just play good D like he always do, you know, and he'll he'll be fine. But I got Milwaukee in six over to Boston. Interesting, man. I, I, I after I saw the way that Milwaukee played, the way that Giannis controls the entire game, the way that Drew Holiday is playing right now, what Bobby Portis has been doing consistently. What the bench has been doing, I mean, the bench has been absolutely absurd. I actually see yeah. Milwaukee think they sweep it. Four. I think they sweep. Damn. I think they sweep because I think Boston got too much pride to get swept. They see, they, they might don't have care the pride, smallness. But I think but but Milwaukee has championship swag now. Yeah, they, they do. They know how to get it done. And here's the thing. Not saying that um, Milwaukee coach is going to out-coach Boston's coach, but this really just comes down to player personnel now. I think that Milwaukee's bench is that, that, is that much better than Boston's bench. And if them two yeah. dudes, even if they come out and they both get 40, <laughs> right. they, they hey. still don't have enough. That's only 80. Hey, it was so You're funny. You're going to need 100 plus <laughs> to hey, beat gee. the Bucks. They said, one of the announcers said, oh, yeah, Boston is going to have to find a way to run off some points when, when Giannis is, goes out the game. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. 
Absolutely. I'm like, damn, wait a minute. Y'all can't even y'all when Giannis in the game, y'all get y'all can't get shit done or hit nothing. So when Giannis goes out, hey, he got the game, dog. Like, like, let's try to get to the rim. Well, let me tell you what Giannis said. Giannis looked over at that young fella and said, Hey man, I ain't KD. I'm the <laughs> Greek freak. I'm the Greek freak, and I'm different. Yeah. I'm gonna stop you and then I'm gonna put you in the basket. You see the one play, man, where the boy threw it to himself off the backboard? Yeah. Then, now, let me tell you what was most impressive about that play. Not that he actually threw it off the backboard, because we've seen that before. But if you look at the replays, you got three defenders on the Boston who jumped with him. He out-jumped them and then dumped on all three of them. It, and, and, it, and it looked like, uh, it, I mean, like, because he, because dude, he, he had, he, he stopped him. He played good yes. defense, but yes. Giannis spent. Giannis spent the other way and said, oh, shit, I'm right here in the front of the rim. Let me just throw it off the board and go get it. That, that fucked them up right there. All them dudes, they were just stunned, looking. They couldn't. They were just like looking like, no, he ain't. No, yes, he is. <laughs> See, this, is this is why, again, Milwaukee's just one of them teams, very similar to, um, to Golden State. Whoever comes off those benches, you, I mean, come on, man. You, you, when Jordan Poole gets to go in the game, they don't skip a beat. That dude actually enhances the game. And the same yeah. thing with Milwaukee. When they start bringing them shooters off the bench, and man, and when they get Middleton back, because he'll be back. Yeah, Middleton will be back. Yeah. I, so, I, 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 I got him. I got him in six. Got him in six. And then the earlier game we talked about, man, with this uh, Memphis and Golden State. Who you got, and how many games is it gonna take? I man, I told you, man, I want that that that. The first game was so damn good. I need to see six more of them motherfuckers. We, I don't <laughs> want this to be no. Don't cheat me. I want, right, right, I right, want right. both of y'all to goddamn it be like two, two pit bulls just going at each other. Like I, you take a punch, I'm gonna take a punch. Okay, I'm I'm coming back. Like I just need to see that go seven games, just because that series is just so good. It's so good. I can't, I can't see it going seven games. I, I I think Golden State gets it in five, and these are my reasoning, simply because of this, man. Yes, we know about their championship experience, but I just think that Memphis has not had enough in them to, to play a team like this that's Golden State, where – they got to guard all game long. Steph never stops moving. Clay never stops moving. Jordan Poole never stops moving. Draymond Green never stops moving. Even the big guys in the middle, they never stop moving. And when you can't relax defensively, because you notice even in yesterday's game, every time Memphis relaxed defensively, Steph would hit a bum. And they showed a camera on the guys, and they looking at each other like, I thought you had him. I thought you was going to cover the screen. Mm -hmm. You cannot relax on them and Gee. i don't think memphis has enough shooters to combat that did you know looney is from milwaukee and was the man up there yes yes what, what, what and i'm talking about from no he went to high school there will like he's yes. the, he like the shit yes yeah what yes. kevin looney you 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 knew he was from milwaukee and, and like he got like they love him there much juice. He got much juice up there. Wow. Big Didn't time. know that. And, man. It, so I got I got I got I got Golden State in five. I I will give Memphis a game, but here's interesting. I think Memphis gets a game in Golden State. I don't think they win the next one. I think mm. Golden State goes up 2 0 in a place, and I think Golden State is gonna relax in their next two games that'll be at home. Mm, I don't know. That 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 I think I think Dray by Draymond getting ejected and them still winning that game, they finna go to the crib and they wanna make a statement like you motherfuckers not on our level. Y'all had a good season, but let me tell you, in the playoffs, going for that chip, we finna we finna go to another level and That's see if y'all can get to us. Don't forget about this though. I mean, Andre Iguodala didn't play either though. He'll be back. Oh, that's right. Iggy. So, yeah. Listen, listen. They just, I think they're just too strong. They can throw too many bodies at Memphis, and Memphis can't throw the same amount of bodies back at them because as soon as 
Jaw has to sit down. Mm-hmm. If Jaron Jackson Jr. gets in foul trouble, right? You know, if Bane's shot isn't hitting, then that's that's basically their offensive tandem right there. Right. So, and 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 here's the thing, Ja ain't gonna get a break because either he's gonna have to guard Steph or he's gonna have to guard Clay. Well, I think. What did you? Well, I mean, well, I think Jaron Jackson and and and, and, and um, Jaron Jackson. Bane, Ja, and uh, the other boy with the braids. What's his name? Like the, I was talking about um, uh, the, the light skinned kid. Yeah, they yeah. all they they can't have a bad game, bro. Like them yeah. four dudes got to come to play every game against this squad. And so my question is, that four against Golden State four. Oh man, that's tough. That's, that's tough, tough, G. That's tough. I can't even. I can't give it. I can't. I well, can't listen, do we'll it. We'll be back for that. We'll be I can't back do it. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's 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 move on. Then let's move on, man. Because we got we got two great games, man, coming up this week, heading into the weekend as well. Again, we got Miami, mm-hmm. Philly, Phoenix, and Dallas, and of course, you know, I I feel sorry for Philly right now with the that. big fella out. I, I mean, and, and I mean, it could be the first two games, man. You 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 don't know. I mean, it. Yeah. And the way that Miami played, like it's not like Miami is going to be like, oh, Joe Lambeal isn't playing. I think they're gonna up their intensity. Now the question becomes, will we get James Harden of Houston, mm. or will we get James Harden the facilitator? Because they need the James Harden of Houston who can go out and get them 50 tonight. Because if James Harden don't get 50, Philly won't even be in this game tonight. You say if James Harden don't get 50, I don't think he got to get 50, but I think he got to play well. Uh, Max, he got to play well. Um, uh, the other boy got to play well. If they, they, they all, some- They're playing well is what? They're going to get their numbers. They're going to get. Max is going to get 17, 18. No, no, Max, you got you to up yours. You got you to have 25, 26 now. You see what I'm saying? But where's he going to get that at? Max, he get those when everything is going well and he's playing extremely well. Tobias Harris, he's going to be consistent. He's going to give you 20 and 12. But then where do you get the Joel Embiid who's giving you 35 to 45 points on any given night. So that's what I, that's what I'm talking about. The bench got to come to play. You ain't just putting on a motherfucking jersey to come to practice, motherfucker. Like, hey, you get in the game, you know Embiid out. Danny Green, I need at least four threes from you, dog. Like, what the Please fuck? Please tell me you didn't just say Danny Green. Come on, man. What's wrong? What, that's what he do. He don't do shit no, else for sure. That's what he used to do. That's what <laughs> he used say to do. That's what he used to do, man. What are you that, talking that, about? That, that, so that he can't Danny do it Green, no more? He can't do Listen, it no more. Man. We talking about the same Danny Green who, if he was still doing it so much, L.A. would have kept him. That, mm. that Danny Green, he might hit a shot. Man, if Danny Green lead the game with six points, I'll be surprised. Yeah, you say if he, he lead hit, the game with six points. So that means he needs to hit two three-pointers that he want. But I think that there's a big drop-off because Joel and B feels such a gap for them in scoring. Yeah. The only logical person that can take that up. And yeah, I know I said 50, but he's still going to have to have somewhere between 40 and 50 points for them to even have a chance to be in this game. Mm -hmm. Because here's the thing. Miami just got too much. They got inside presence, outside presence. They got ball handlers. They could, I mean, they're they're tough defensively. Mm Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. I think it's gonna be tough, man. I, I, in this series, I want this game. I want this series to go seven games too, because I want Joel Embiid to come back. Um, but I think, I mean, they kind of, I don't know. I mean, what Bam, what Bam gonna give you? Bam gonna give you a double double, twenty twenty plus, and and Bam is always giving you between twelve. I mean, twelve and fifteen rebounds a game. Well, look, if Bam, if Bam don't do over, over exert himself while Embiid ain't out, 
I think that's what Bam gonna have to do. Well, see, I think he will, but I think Bam was gonna give you that regardless because Bam, he's so mobile and agile. I think what Embiid does, and this is for anybody, who can stop that dude? Can't nobody stop Embiid. I mean, that's why he's gonna give you the 35 to 40 <laughs> Who can stop that dude? Can't nobody stop that I mean, dude. Yeah, he's gonna do what he do. But, oh, but he I got think, guard skills, forward skills, center skills. Yes. Like, what the fuck? Absolutely. But I think with Jimmy, because he's such a two-way player, like a Kawhi type, that's going mm -hmm. to be tough for them. And then, don't let them two boys on the wing start shooting that ball, man. Oh, my goodness. It's... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it, yeah. Come on, man. I just think... I think, and this is just my pick, I got Miami winning the series, and I think Miami will win this series in six games. You got Miami in six? Mm. I want Philly in seven. I want Philly in seven. I want Philly in seven. Embiid to have too much of a good year to go out in the second round. Fuck that. Like, I want to ride with yeah, Embiid. I feel sorry for Doc Rivers, man. I oh. want to see Doc. You know, yeah. a monkey off his back that he could that he can that he could take another team to the championship. Yeah, but but this ain't the year, man. This Listen, ain't the year for Doc. I, Come on, I, man. I, I, hate, I hate to say it, man, but the process ain't over. <laughs> still, Come on, they man. Still, they still gonna be working on the process, man. So let's jump over here to this Western Conference, man. Yeah. You know, interesting enough, uh, Phoenix and Dallas. Again, we talked about this earlier. I was so disappointed in the fact that the way Utah went out. I just didn't think that they played tough at all against this Dallas team, which is which is really yeah. a, 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 a good team. But what I like about this series more than anything is that both of these teams, man, probably right now are the healthiest that they both have been. Mm. I think going up one-on-one, -on -one, uh, I think Phoenix, especially getting that boy back, when Devin Booker came back. Yeah. I mean, he didn't. Even, I mean, he didn't. Even, I mean, he didn't even shoot well. But just to get him back in the rhythm of of his yep. of his rotations, of his come offs, and all of that, I think that was good. But uh, this gonna be a this gonna be a tough one though, uh, Will. I, it, it, it is. I mean, I can't even. I mean, because I know Luca and 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 them boys ain't gonna back down. You know what Luka, I'm saying? Like they gonna have to Luka beat gonna them. Average thirty. Luka, Luca's gonna average thirty this series. Easy. And they don't. They Easy. and Dallas don't get Tim Hardaway back at all. Not right now. Still out. Damn. Still out. It's 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 just it's just tough. But this is what I think is going to be the difference in this series. I think CP3 is going to do what he does. I think Luca's going to do what he does. Um, I think Bronson is going to do what he does. I I think all those guys are going to do what they do. But to me, the big fella in the middle for Phoenix, mm. it's going to be the difference maker. Because I don't think anybody on Dallas got anybody that, and I'm calling him this. He is the, to me the rebirth of Raph Sampson. That dude, man, can shoot, <laughs> jump, dunk, block. I think he will be the difference maker. If that dude averages, if he gets a double double, and I'm talking about 20 to 24 points a game, 10 to 14 rebounds, then. Then Dallas in trouble. So I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna go with Phoenix, and I'm I'm gonna say Phoenix wins this thing in six games. I'm gonna say Phoenix win it in seven, but I like Aiden. Aiden is hitting the free throw shot so very comfortable and well now. Like he don't even really got to go down and post you up. If he's like, if you gonna back up off me, he's like, oh shit, you know I can hit this right. The other day I seen the dude hit like three of them in a row, bro. Like from there, like easy. Them motherfuckers went all net. I was like, damn, he's shooting that motherfucker fluid. All I'm going to say is this. Phoenix should have opened their pocketbook up to that boy last year. Now they're going to have to pay him even more money. Oh, that's right. Phoenix. He did. They didn't pay him. Yep. And he still played he said, and, didn't say, and didn't say no. shit. He, he, he didn't it's say, I'm going to wait out and all that. He just still played. Like, fuck it. I'm going to show y'all why y'all should pay me. Um, man, listen. This is probably going to be one of the best playoff series uh, the NBA's had in a long time because you – what I like so much about this, all of your familiar type faces mm -hmm. are not necessarily in there. Yeah, we still got CP3, but uh, for the most part, you can see the transition of the league. A new era, man, is happening right before our eyes. And you and I, man, we've been lucky enough to see this happen quite a few times in our lives. We yeah. saw 
you know, when Dr. J was transitioning out and the Jordan era, Barkley and these yeah. guys began to come in. And then when Jordan and, and Ewan and those guys began to transition out, you see LeBron and Melo and those guys transition in. And now as they are transitioning out, you see the John Morants. So you, know, look, you see the Zion Williamsons. Look, man, it's it's special. Piggybacking off of that, and this how this how I'm I'm setting it up in my in my mind of a piggyback. What you just said, I gotta see, and I would want to see this in the East Conference Finals. MB and Giannis. Oh, uh, uh, in the West, I want to see Golden State and Phoenix. Absolutely. And I'm in basketball heaven, bro. <laughs> and, and me, except for one, I think you would get your wish. I just don't have Philly beating Miami, man. I just think. Damn, I Will, think, come on. You got a shot town boy over there coaching hey, them, Will. They do got a shot town boy, but listen, if, if, if I'm putting money on the game, and more than likely I am going to put some money on the game, <laughs> I'm, I'm betting on them dudes that play defense, man. The, the, them boys just play defense, man. And, mm. I mean, and and the way that Spo coaches these dudes, man. Come on, listen. He's a baby Spoke Pat Riley. Jimmy, yeah, yeah. He a baby Pat Riley. You, you saw the incident when he got in Jimmy Butler's face. Come on, man. That's that's your superstar. Yeah. And you letting them know, hey, no, we win this way. Yeah. And what did Jimmy do? Accept it. Accept it. Stepped his game up. Yeah. And, and guess what he told the other guys? Y'all better follow me. And his was interesting even with Miami. They're not even playing with Kyle Lowry right now. So that's more experience. You yeah. know, he's just a couple of games away from being back. So You got a hamstring, right? Uh, got a hamstring. And again, I just think it will be extremely difficult for Philly to win games without the best player on their team. You just cannot win, not consistently, not in the playoffs without Joel Embiid. Well, just, well all, I think all they need to do is get one of them without him. If they can get one of them without him, and, I mean, Doc said, you know, indefinitely, like he ain't got nothing back from the doctors yet. Like they ain't say like, oh, well, shit, if he, if, he don't play the, if he don't play two games, he may be able to come back from game three. Like they ain't even told him that. You know, you know what that means? All that means is we try to find a mask that fit his face. That's all that means. We're gonna we, we gonna put a pad up under his eyeball right. and put the mask right. on top of that motherfucker. So if he get and hit, see if he could take he, right. right. <laughs> they just gonna make sure he can take some hits first. Right. That's all that indefinite crap mean, man. They be cracking me up out indefinitely. I'm like, boy, that terminology just get thrown out there for anything now. Yeah, but, dude. Uh, hey, listen. I'm Will Gates. That's Arthur AG. This is the Hoop Dreams Podcast, NBA 2022 preview. Yes, yes. Thank you all for uh, listening to this. And we'll catch back with y'all in the future as the NBA season continues, the playoffs continue to progress. Peace.